If you're not only struggling with getting your music properly produced on your own, but you're also struggling with the mental battles that comes with that, then this video is going to be for you. In this interview with my client, Jaden, we're gonna go through his story and we're gonna talk about how he went from, not only did he not produce a song, but he had never even made a song and put one out properly, to in less than 60 days, produced his first instrumental, recorded the vocals, mixed, and mastered his very first track. And since then, he's made tons of instrumentals. He's already getting ready for his second release and he's getting ready to launch his music career. So if you're watching this right now, you're gonna get a ton of inspiration from this video. And it's gonna help you take your music to the next level. Let's dive in. We got Jay Bass in the building here. Super, super pumped, super pumped to have you. Um, wanna dive into your story. You've got an interesting yeah. one and you know, before even starting, man, I just want to say I'm super proud of you. I am. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, man. I'm proud of your results. I'm proud of the work you put in. You've been super dedicated ever since getting into this program. Yeah. And I just, one thing I notice about you that I feel like is different than everyone else in the program, you just kind yeah. of move and then you're like, here's what I did, everyone. And I'm like, oh, Jaden's got his song coming out or, oh, he's done this, <laughs> he's done that. And you're just like, yeah, you know what I mean? And I just, I love that. I love that. And so, yeah. Um, tell, I mean, just kind of remind me and tell everyone watching this, just kind of your background, where you're from, what got yep. you into music, all that good stuff. Yeah. So right now I'm uh, 25 years old. Um, yeah. Grew up in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. Yes. That's a long, long <laughs> location, but it is, it is X. And uh, yeah. So I would say I'm more of a pandemic artist, I guess you could say. So yeah, during the pandemic when everything kind of went haywire at that April there, um, kind of. I was uh, briefly diagnosed with bipolar at that time. So when I was in the hospital for a couple of weeks, all I really had was like just music to listen to and a pen and a pad. So that's kind of how it kind of started. And I just, I knew like, you know, rapping along with like artists that I like or singing along with them. I knew I kind of, I had something or I wanted to do something. So just starting kind of continuously writing in the hospital and kind of kept on growing from there. And then I would say, maybe 2021 is really when I really started to like practice my writing. Uh, I purchased like, well, I had a laptop already, but I purchased like a DAW uh, Scarlet, and then I got like the mic and everything. So prior to getting into the course, I probably maybe wrote mm, 20, 25 songs, maybe recorded 20 of them. And uh, yeah, just recording on my own. I kind of, in my head, I had the idea that you know, once I had it recorded, I would just be able to send it off to somebody and they would be able to, you know, do a bunch of magic and just make it make it happen sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, just this past summer, I hooked up with a buddy that was kind of, you know, he was a, a friend of mine that was able to do it for free. And he had time on the weekends, allegedly. And then, you know, lives get busy on both ends. So over the whole summer, I didn't really get any progress. And then, yeah, it just so turned out that August, end of August there, I seen one of your ads. Uh, and then I followed right away and one thing led to another. And I'm definitely glad I found it because it definitely probably saved me a lot of time and money over the long run. So, yeah, no, I'm happy to be here, happy to have gone through it all. And, hey, I'm only growing up from here. So feeling Dude. awesome about it for sure. Dude, thank you so much for sharing. I, you know what, bro? I, I didn't really know all of that. I knew some yeah. of your story. Um the bipolar thing I only have known through DMs. Didn't expect you to share it. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Because you never know who's watching this, right? That yeah. Somebody might be really get help from that. Um yeah. are you like, I mean, are you cool sharing more about that part of your story? Uh yeah, if you got questions, I'll get Yeah. I mean, yeah, dude. Like, so you know, shed light. Like, I don't, I'm not personally diagnosed yeah. with any anything like that. And so how what what is that like in terms of like how has that affected your life and then how does that affect your music? Yeah. Yeah. So like initially, like growing up as a teen, like I would sometimes have like uh situations of being like uh weirdly depressed for some times, and then other times, say I would go to a bar with some friends and then I didn't want to be in the room. I just wanted to go for like a really long walk. Like I one day I walked all the way home from the bar, which was like five kilometers. And you get in that kind of like manic state where you almost think like not kind of superhero feeling, but it's like I can do anything. Let's go, go, go. Or sometimes it was the opposite. And growing up, didn't really understand why. And then I guess 
mid 20s for males is kind of usually the time when like the diagnosis comes through so initially i during the pandemic situation i took an ssri for my depression just figured i would try something see how it goes and it kind of shot me to be more super manic um i actually got in a car accident before my accident or before my hospitalization kind of a long story but and then I was, yeah, I was in the hospital for two weeks and all I really had was my phone and really just a pen and a pad, things like that. And I was really into Drake at the time. I'm not sure why. And then uh, I listened, I think every day I listened to a Drake album from, what, what's the first one? So Far Gone, even his mixtape all the way up. I think he had uh, Dark Lane demo tapes at the time. And I remember listening to his mixtape for the first time and one of his bars was like uh, trying to get the house in Toronto with pine floors. And that's him talking about manifesting his uh, basketball court, in my opinion, for what he has now. So then I, after that, I was like, wow, this person went from not really having anybody know him from his mixtape to about 10 years later. I mean, obviously it's Drake. He has a lot of funding behind him, but you know, that amount of growth that I seen just through the hospital, I was like, okay, after like five, 10 years, I can like really be wherever I want with this if I really stick to it and try to learn it. So yeah, starting there, like that really was like, wow, I could really do this. So yeah, that's kind of where it kind of sparked and then just kind of sticking to it, trying to, you know, just keep writing every day uh, to a work and back. I would kind of do put like instrumentals on just trying to see if I can actually start to get a flow going together. Cause like, yeah, prior to that, I had really like no drive to like want to be an artist or want to release anything. And then uh, just consistent practice going back and forth to work kind of freestyle and writing that's that sort of thing. And uh, it just, yeah, one thing grew into another and yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. I yeah. also am a huge Drake fan. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and dude, you're bad, yeah, bro. Your story's hitting me right now. Like for real, for real. Like, yeah, it, yeah. I didn't even expect it to go like this, this interview. Uh, which <laughs> hey, is, we're which here is now. Sick. Yeah. Like dude, literally starting the interview, super <laughs> powerful messages. I'm with it. Yeah. So, so, uh, man, I mean, how, how, how does it, what do you feel like is the relationship between this is a deep question. Yeah. <laughs> what do you feel like is the relationship between where you pull inspiration from music and then all that other stuff you just talked about? Um, like just inspiration from other artists, like where it kind of all comes now that into deep your inside own. you. Cause you got that right. Like we pull the inspiration from ourselves is like how we're going to make a song it comes from yeah. us. Yeah. Where do, Cause it's all mixed up, right? All those emotions, thoughts. Yeah. But like, obviously we also like, you have this, like you have bi your bipolar as well. That's getting mixed in there. Yeah. Um, how does all that get mixed up? I want to get the inner thoughts of Jay Bass of how do you make a song from within yourself? Um, tough to say, like, I just try to, like when I start to listen to a song, listen to a beat I like, I don't really like say, oh, I'm going to write a song about this or I'm going to write a song about that. Like for me, like uh, usually it's when I'm in the car and I just kind of pick up with a melody. I, oh, I kind of like that one. And then I kind of go on repeat and repeat. And then I'm like, OK, I'll go with this song. But honestly, I don't really have like a subject for really, really my music right now. Like I kind of go here and there just kind of trying different things. Um but yeah, I would definitely say like, I would say, yeah, just Drake being as like an artist that can do singing and rapping and kind of be all over the place. That's kind of where I inspire to be. Like I'd be able, like to be the person that can kind of make a song about, well, maybe do a country song like Post Malone one day or like, you know, be able to sing, rap, kind of do both things. Um, but yeah, it's kind of all I have for that one. But no, I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I also share that same uh, inspiration from like Drake, Kanye, how, how eclectic they are. Yeah. I've always never, I've never wanted to be one dimensional. Yeah. So guys like that, right. Especially like, um, <clears throat> like Drake obviously is there to me is something about him. That's I think underrated, which I, which like he's not underrated. It's Drake. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing that I think is underrated is, is why, 
he reached this level. And to me, it's because he blurred the lines between rapping and singing. Yeah. Cause it's like, I'm like hearing him and I'm like, is he rapping right now? Or would you consider <laughs> this singing? Yeah. And like, yeah. he goes back and forth so seamlessly. Right. To yeah. me, that's what made him great. He changed yeah. the culture of music. Right. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree. Like, especially Kanye as well. Like uh, he was started out as a producer for Jay-Z and then decided, Hey, I can also do this. So uh, yeah, I would say, yeah, definitely inspires me to be like, you know, just jump on any track. Like if I wanted to be the verse, if I wanted to be the chorus, um, even if I just want to produce having that element right now is really awesome. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Give me one quick sec, bro. One sec. All good. Totally. So let's talk about that, right? Getting into that part of the journey. So, so Mm -hmm. you came into the program. Let me get it straight. Correct me if I'm wrong. You had like started writing songs. You had a homie. I love how you said, (laughs) you said allegedly would be free on the weekends. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Didn't work out. We have one. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think the last time I really spoke to him about it, I think I maybe sent him like, Hey, I like this review of the mix, but can you do this, this, and this? And didn't really give, you know, it's kind of hard to explain to a producer what you want when you haven't really done it yourself. Like say fade in here, fade out there, change this melody to that, to make it sound like this. So I think producing myself is definitely going to help me. Like, even if I still want to work with them, be able to communicate those actions definitely helps. Um, But yeah, during the summer, I would say... Yeah, I ended up re-recording it because I originally recorded on Soundtrap, which is nice, but it doesn't really have as much control as, say, like Ableton or Logic does. So I really just had about maybe like an album's worth of songs written, recorded. And then, uh, yeah, over the summer, nothing really happened. So I was like, all right, well, kind of annoying, kind of my fault, but I don't really want to be that guy. It's like... Hey, are you finished this yet? Are you, you know, when's it going to get done? And then, you know, after a week, two, three, four, it kind of just adds up. And then, uh, yeah, very happy that I found your course and everything. Cause who knows, like might've been at it for another six months trying to get it mixed, things like that. So, uh, yeah, we're still friends, but you know, he's got his own business type of thing, you know, busy life as well. So, yeah. I love that. No hard feelings. Yeah. It's like, dude, I just want to get my music done. No worries. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> So, okay. And so coming into the program, like you had no, what was your experience with music before coming into this? Yeah. So besides recording, I guess you could say I was able to kind of mix vocals beforehand. Like it wasn't the same vocal chain that you taught us, but um, yeah, mostly just had it recorded, not really mixed. Um, I would say I made I made one beat prior to going into it and I don't even know if I had like drums in it or anything. It was just kind of like a basic melody that I wrote over, yeah. um, but nothing really that I was like proud of to say like, Oh yeah, I made this beat by the way. Like it was just kind of, you know, an unfinished song. And I kind of just always thought like, you know, making beats or really quality beats would take a lot of time to learn. Mm. And uh, I mean, from, I think I've made about 18 beats in this course and nice. hey, I'd say I'm, pretty like i'm writing to about four of them right now i mean i might not use every one of them for myself but i could always like you know sell beats or give them to a buddy or things like that so uh nice to have that on the side so i can like maybe sell beats that like kind of help my marketing finances things like that who knows but uh yeah so really no beat making hardly didn't even really know what mixing was although i did Actually, I read a I read a book prior to coming into here is from some Grammy award winning had like a template you can follow. And just the plugins alone from the template they had was almost as much as the course. It was maybe like two grand worth of plugins. It was like a one time buy and for each one of them type of thing. But yeah, I've once I figured out the price of this course, I was like, okay, it makes it's definitely more sense in the long run. If it's just plugins with adding beats on top of it, recording, mixing, and mastering, if I did pay to get that done. Uh, so, yeah, it definitely totally. helped me out for sure. Yeah, 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 totally. Um, which, by the way, one of your beats, 
you didn't follow up with me. I'm buying one. Of yeah, them. Like, I'm pretty it's, sure you're. It's actually <laughs> it's actually insane. Like so, no no bullshit. Like the I'll tell you a quick story about this. Yeah. The day after I got, because I was just in the hospital a few weeks ago. Yeah. And yeah. I'm fine now. Good. <laughs> totally good. Yeah, but I think the day after I got back home, I woke yeah. up and went on a walk. Cause I couldn't yeah. really, you, bro, you're in the hospital. You can't, I mean, you can walk the halls, but it's not like you're, yeah, not the same. Yeah. And I'm a big walker. I walk a lot. Like yeah, almost, I, I walk almost every day. So to get walking taken away from me for five days, it was like a little much for me. It was yeah. I was like, fuck, yeah. I can't yeah. walk. Yeah. I feel yeah. Yeah. Um, so the day I got out of the hospital, I like w- woke up, I was like, I'm fucking going on a walk. Right. So <laughs> I walked and I was checking my phone and I saw that you dropped these beats. Yeah. So I listened to one and the one I told you I really liked, I was like, fuck. Yeah. This beat is fucking good. Like, yeah. Dramatic. I totally remember the one I, I sent you too. And it was, I was impressed with those two. So I was like, oh, I got to share them. These are the last two yeah. beats I've made. So I was like, yeah. Yeah. And I wrote to it immediately about nice. like being in the hospital. Yeah. And just like some dope. And it, and I was literally writing it and I was like, this might be one of my best verses I've ever written in my fucking life, 13 years. And it was nice. doing a beat Good to hear. that a client of mine who I taught how to make beats. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, for sure, buy a beat from him. You know, nice. and I don't buy beats all the time because I make yeah, my own. Make them. <laughs> but fuck, if my client's doing it, I'm like, I'd love to buy one from a client. Right? Yeah. That's shit yeah, is no, lit. That definitely gasses me up too because it's like, if the beat maker teacher is yeah. buying my beats, I must be doing something right. So 100%. You know, so, yeah. so anyways, we'll, we'll, chat in slack like we need to get that right like yeah going. yeah but uh but okay so so now you've made yeah you've got your song drop in december 1st that's this friday yeah, yeah. pumped mm-hmm. i'm definitely gonna share that and Sweet. so again tell everyone all this like how many beats songs written recorded where are you at with the total yeah so in the program um I've made 18 beats. I'd say I've recorded three songs with lyrics. I'm mixing my second one, which I'll hopefully have it for release on January 1st, trying to do that song a month thing just to kind of get practice releasing. Um, And then, yeah, 18 beats. And yeah, there's second ones being mixed. And then the I do have Must We Love that I've gone through completely through. I think it took me roughly 58 days, roughly, um, to finally mix and master that song. And I, I mean, I'm definitely by no means like mastered the art of mixing or mastering, but you know, I'm it's a finished product in my hand that I can say I'm proud of that I made. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, uh, what else? That's amazing. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And wait, so it wasn't 58 days to mix and master. It was 58 days from starting the program. Right? Yeah. From starting the beat to lyrics to everything. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think September, like right when I got in, it was like the songwriting month competition. So that definitely helped. Oh, cool. And I think also like, you know, 90 days, you're like, oh, if I don't get it done in time. What's going to happen? Although you would be there to help. You know, I kind of was like, okay, let's just get everything done. Let's get working on it right away so that I can at least spend the last maybe month or so just kind of asking extra questions if I need. Um, so yeah, that song contest definitely helped start that first song. It was actually to the first beat that I wrote. And for some reason, just the chorus hit right away. And I'm like, well, I'm guessing I'm right into this one. And then turns out it's my first single that I'm ever dropping. So yeah, really proud with where it's at. Like from even the artwork with Canva, doing that stuff, starting to get into like kind of more marketing, which I've never really done. But now that I have, you know, finished product, it's a lot easier to sell something when you have it in your hand. So um, yeah, really stoked and proud of what I've done so far, for sure. I'm also proud and you should 100% be proud because, yeah, you know, talking about the grand scheme of things, I love that you've brought that up a couple of times. Yeah. Like, you know, you've only been in the program like what is you know, two and a half three months whatever it is yeah but like i don't know if you'll really i mean you're getting the benefits now but yeah. you're gonna really get the benefits like in three years because you're mm-hmm. in three years in between that time maybe you'll forget right you'll just be so used to being a self-producing artist and you're like this is just you you get used to it yeah and like three years from now you'll look back you'll probably drop a bunch of songs tons of songs yeah 
And then like, I feel like one day in three years from now, you'll add up the math of how much that would have costed you to get produced. And you'll be like, holy yeah. fuck, I just saved myself tens of thousands of dollars. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I'm happy I found you at more the beginning of my career compared to like, yeah, three years in where I would have had to probably spend a pretty penny just to, you know, get it produced, let alone marketed. So yeah, it's definitely, definitely helpful. That's for sure. Yeah. And I'm super excited for that. And, uh, where do you feel like because like because you took this leap to join Rapid Fire Music Academy and now you're at the kind of the end part of it? I yeah. mean, really, it's just the beginning. But yeah, you've now graduated in far less than 90 days. Like it didn't even take you. 90 yeah. Days. Um, yeah. Where do you feel like you're going to go now that you're fully like where you're at now? What do you see for yourself, for your career and your music? Um, well, at least for the next couple of years, at least for this year, I'm going to try my best to be, you know, a month and be consistent with releasing a song a month. Although if it doesn't happen and it's not finished, you know, I'm not going to release something that I don't think is finished, but, um, definitely kind of just building my discography and building like my, my artist pages, um, definitely for the next two years. And then with that, like making my own beats, like I'm sure I'll have extra ones that I, maybe I won't be inspired to write to that I can sell as well. So I think, um, maybe selling beats as well as making revenue with the streams and everything, getting used to all of that. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to push me into, uh, you know, a full artist's career. And, you know, uh, eventually I would, you know, at least like to try performing, you know, not maybe my favorite thing or the thing I'm most excited for, but, you know, <laughs> it kind of comes in hand. And hopefully, you know, having good music will help me, you know, perform, you know, get a good uh, vibe going with the crowd type of thing. But uh, yeah, well, doing that, you know, being, you know, an artist and a producer and both, you know, it's definitely uh, expands the variety of you know, different type of revenue streams I can make with just beat making and, you know, mixing, mastering. Maybe I can do that for other artists as well. Um, it's definitely going to open the doors for things that I can do with music and I you know even like the thing you're doing with like the class and everything like there's so many ways you can take music you can teach you can you know do all kinds of things so um I'm definitely happy and I'm excited to see where like the next five years go for me and you know just trying to stay consistent with myself for sure that's fantastic man I love all that that gets me hyped for you you Thank know you. it really does I, I love that your mind is open to the possibilities that that yeah. to me is kind of honestly one of the things that's helped me is I've always just been open and you know what's funny I'm actually like I don't love performing that much I, I do yeah. well and I'm like whatever extroverted and stuff but yeah I made the conscious decision a long long time ago like I'd rather make money here at my chair than yeah. have to go tour yeah um and I've proven that that works so you don't have to necessarily think like oh yeah. I have to go tour to make money it's like you can, I still want to, but mm -hmm. I'm loving yeah. this business I'm doing now. And so mm -hmm. kind of just have to set the intention for yourself of what it is that you feel like you want for yourself and yeah. your vision, you know? Yeah. Um, well, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm super proud of you, man. I'm, I'm so fucking pumped for you. Bro. Like I'm no, so excited. Thank you. And you no, know, this has been fun. This has been very helpful. And I mean, yeah, having rapid fire in the palm, in the, in my phone all the time, having you and Corey like at my disposal pretty much whenever I need has been great. And yeah, like you've said previously, like instead of watching hundreds of YouTube videos trying to find the right answer, like I can just text either one of you and, you know, nine times out of 10, I'll get it, which was pretty nice. And uh, yeah, no, it's definitely, definitely money well spent in my opinion. Like over the wrong one, the long run it'll definitely help me out for sure for sure that's great dude that's that's amazing um yeah i was gonna you answered a question but i'll, I'll kind of ask in a different there way you go. if someone's watching right they booked a call with me yeah and they're probably gonna watch this i mean i hope they do right yep and they're watching this and you're like okay listen like you're about to book a call with lee right what would you say to them what would you what would you say to them to kind of make them feel comfortable that like this is a good decision for them. Yeah. If they're kind of worried, it might not be like, what, what would you say to them? Yeah. I would say, 
yeah, so like while doing this course, like I have pretty much a full time job. I work maybe 35 hours at my job at a retail job. And yeah, going into it, I was like, oh, maybe I won't have enough time, you know, things like that. But I think you maybe said half an hour a day is enough. I probably spent, to be honest, maybe one or two hours a day. Although sometimes weekends, you know, things happen. I might miss a day or two. But yeah, it's pretty easy to stay consistent. And yeah, instead of looking to thousands of YouTube videos, yeah, you have course modules that you can watch and rewatch. And you have for as long as you need for really for life, I'm pretty sure those yes. courses. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was very easy to follow along. And personally, I use Ableton. Um, although the course is taught in logic, it's pretty easy to go between one or the two. Um, I'm not sure if other DAWs are similar, but at least Ableton, if you have it or not logic, you'll be fine. Um, yeah. And all I really needed to purchase, maybe going into it, I updated my headphones because ears are the most important thing. Uh, hard drive I had to get. Scarlet I already had. Um, microphone I upgraded. This is the Scarlet right now, but I have that Technica one or whatever you recommended. Um, but yeah, if you're willing to spend maybe an extra, maybe, yeah, I won't say the price in here if you don't want me to, but um, yeah. It's, it's going to increase. So yeah, don't say it. <laughs> yeah, I won't say could change, but yeah, definitely worth it for myself. Um, I had to upgrade the laptop, but I was going to do that anyway. I think I'm going to sell my old one. Um, nice. But yeah, super easy to follow along. I think if you have 90 days, that's plenty of time. Um, and yeah, I think it was it was fun being in here. And I think anyone listening will enjoy it as well, for sure. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah, lifetime access to the course. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking right now too, like even with being in the community, I don't think I'm going to, kick people out at all either i think yeah. i'm just going to offer the upgrade option of being in music masters For and sure. just keep everyone like if you can yeah flow yeah. back and forth just a constant want, but, discord yeah yeah pretty much but that's awesome dude yeah i appreciate the message yeah. that's great and yeah i appreciate your time appreciate you sharing your story bro i i think that you yeah. share powerful stuff like you inspire me you know you've got stuff going on outside of music job yeah. you've got like we all have our challenges in life and j bass fights through them j bass is like yeah we're gonna keep going i'm, I'm going for progress yeah. heck yeah it's really cool man um yeah any last things you want to say to people where can they find you how can they find your music your social media uh yeah so instagram j bass like the fish word for letter for letter that's just what i'm using right now you can call me bass it doesn't matter there's bass in the music as well so i won't be won't be hurt by it <laughs> but uh yeah i'm also there on tiktok right now uh moving over oh, to okay. youtube briefly and then uh yeah my music on december 1st must be love first song that will be out there um spotify apple music i'm doing it all right now just to see how it goes and uh yeah you can catch me there other than that hit me up on a dm if you want to link up feature you name it studios open might be beats for sale and yeah that's about it that's about all my story right now <laughs> i love it i just followed you on tiktok um, there we go oh shit one of yours popped off yeah that's the one i uh i uh promoted and then yeah i probably gained i don't know 100 followers just because of that in the last couple of weeks which is kind of exciting so yeah hmm. we're working on it i might need to talk to you about some tiktok ads i never run to i've run them once just to like fuck around but i don't, I don't know yeah i don't know shit about it but Sim similar to instagram but a little bit different yeah this is great this is great dude man jay thank you so much bro Thank yeah, you for no, being on thank here. You. Thank you. Thank you for blessing us with your story. And and yeah. thanks for blessing the community with your good vibes, good energy, bro. It's been amazing to have you. Yeah, no worries. Uh, definitely don't regret it. And glad to see and happy to see what's to come for sure. That's awesome, bro. Well, thanks so much, guys. If you're watching this and uh, you haven't already, click below, book a call with me. Uh, if you're in that process where you already booked a call and you're watching this, super excited to chat with you. And I'll see you on the next one.